the last three days of competition the Chinese team have got so such depth Mikhail Nilovic of Poland first Paralympic competition for him And uh, is the more experienced. He was the Paralympic Epe gold medalist from London. So a total of 45 points to be contested. As we go through the points, we'll just explain what's happening and how the points accumulate. So we can see the standings at the moment. Doesn't really mean a lot at the moment because the People's Republic of China have just had the one match against Italy and comfortable victory there 45 to 28 well the polish team will be aware of that score i'm sure and the top two from this pool b go through so poland will be hoping to get at least more than 28 points against china obviously hoping to win but in the worst case scenario if they don't make it a victory over this strong chinese team then more than 28 points Italy scored would put them above the Italians before they then meet in the final of these matches. You know, like you said there, the, the Polish team, they're hoping to do very well against this Chinese team, but they know they're up against it. And of course, they will have been watching the Italian team and their performance against China very, very carefully because the top two come out of this pool. Uh, into the knockout rounds. Well, six teams competing. There's the start sheet for Poland. Hello, Vajek. First on the piece to represent Poland, the 23 year old. Finished fifth in the individual foil. He's got a tough opening fight up against Tian Jiankuan, the bronze medalist from the FA and the Sabre at these Paralympic Games. Yeah, and uh, Tian, absolute extreme confidence out there as well. He's, he has a beautiful stance in the chair and just full of confidence. And this Chinese team, the whole team is uh, full of, uh, well, like we said, five Paralympic medalists from this Paralympic Games. So they're really the team on form. They certainly are. Well, Jian Zhang Guan, the first fencer up, has a gold medal from 2008 in the FA individual and a bronze from these games. And then plenty of sabre medals as well, including a bronze from this game's just gone and the silver four years ago. Quite an experienced, accomplished athlete at his third Paralympic Games was Nana Vajek. His first Paralympic Games and a solid event in the foil. Made it through to the quarterfinals, just missing out on a place in the semis. Tell us just a little bit how Epe and foil would differ and give us an idea on the difference. Well, Epe will soon see when they are fully prepared with all of their equipment on. The target area differs in Epe. Wheelchair Epe. The whole target is anywhere from the waist up, and that will become clear when they put on the foil skirts, meaning that's a off target area. Everything in fencing now is electronic, so we'll see the bright lights come on. But in FA, it's the first person to make contact with the point of their tip on their opponent. And if the contacts are made simultaneously by both, then double hits count. That's the only weapon in which that's the scenario. 
Whereas Epe and Foil, I mean, Foil and Sabre, however, it's about priority. So this, the more straightforward, to spectate on at least. Well, you say it's about priority, and in that case, if it was a double hit, then the referee would have to decide who had priority. And not so in this situation. So today, it's purely all about the Epe, the final day of Epe, the penultimate day of the wheelchair fencing at these Paralympic Games. We've already had individual men's sabre, men and women's individual foil and Epe over the last three. And we'll finish today. It's the men's and women's team Epe and we'll finish off tomorrow with the foil. So important to get an early lead here. Well, it does put the team up. But in this situation, in these team events, we have Category A and Category B fences mixed together. So we see lead changes quite dramatically when a Category B fencer comes up against a Category A. Both of these athletes on the piece now are Category A fencers. So the lesser impairment of the two categories. Yeah, and we'll explain a little bit about Category A and B a little bit later. So nine bouts, each to five, but it's accumulated. So it'll become clear as we move on up after this. But this bout right now will be the first to five within the three minutes allowed. The winning team will be the first to 45. the referee just asking the athletes to stand down and relax take the masks off and you might well be waiting for the official start time a little bit ahead of time just now but the athletes poised and ready to go yes it's uh, and They've got them all up there, ready to go. And now just trying to hold off for a, a couple of minutes. As Heather said, just for the start time to come up. But Some last minute coaching pointers from the Polish coach, Michal Nalavajek. Remaining focused, but a little relaxing sigh. Never great when you're ready on piste, everything tested, ready to go, and then you have to wait. No, exactly. Uh, it, that's why I just said it uh, a second ago, because uh, they are ready to go, and uh, not fair to them, really. They're um, already prepped up, ready to fight, and uh, look at that. A little bit of concentration there from and we've just got to get their uh, minds right. said it was uh, probably better just to kick it off and uh, let them go not the best is it really for the athletes well the protocol has to be withheld at these Paralympic Games covering all of these bouts like this the second of the two matches that we'll see in Pool B Three teams, only two make it through to the semi-final. We'll certainly know a lot more after this particular bout in Pool B, the men's team event. But uh, just for the moment, we've just got to wait a couple of minutes, so stay with us and we will have the team match between China and Poland 
the second match in this team event. It's Team Sabre. It's Team Epe. A yawn coming from Tian Jiankuang. Whether that's a yawn of nerves or a yawn of relaxation. Most probably the latter for the in-form Chinese athlete. Well, just gives us a little bit of time just to talk about the classification. The A classification then incorporates athletes with good balance and recovery and full trunk movement and class B, those with poorer balance. But uh, these are two, class A, and I think we're getting ready now. They're on guard. Three minutes there, you can see the time, and it's just about to get underway here we go and the first two five hits and then it's a change over to the next two team members Tian first to get a score on the board oh, he has such incredible range doesn't he Tian and so quick in attack and defense. Tian catching Nalavajic just underneath the wrist. And those are the most satisfying of hits to score and also keeping yourself out of safety, well, in safety range, so less likely to be caught in a counter-attack from Nalavajic. Well, you were talking about timing and th that requires absolute precision timing doesn't it it certainly does and point accuracy a tip on the end of the f8 is the only place in which you can score a certain amount of pressure has to go through that tip for the electrical current to happen and then the lights to come on and there Tian getting his point on target 3-0 to People's Republic of China. A great cheer from Tian. Feeling confident. He flew through his three fights in the first match against Italy. And looks like he's ready to repeat that form with the match against Poland. Well, double touches count in Epe. So. Poland will take one point away from that opening bout. Nalavajek already having instructions from his coach. Well, trying to have the early lead, five points to one. Yeah, great start for China. We're talking about accuracy here and uh, just have a look, just pinpoint accuracy. And like you said, the uh, tip, it's only the tip of the Epe there that uh, gets the uh, connection and gets the score. Yep. Same in foil. Sabre, however, only point of the blade can result in a hit. So, bout two. Hu Daoliang from the People's Republic of China up against Darius Pender. Now, this is a mismatch of categories. Hu Dao Liang, category B fencer. And Darius Pender, category A. So maybe you could tell us a little bit more about the difference between these two with their 
with the two categories? Yeah, I d well, uh, classification A, but it, it just basically means that they have more uh, good balance and recovery and uh, full tr trunk movement, which gives them more maneuverability in the chair. And uh, it does make a difference, certainly with range of movement. And uh, a lot of them we saw in the um, category A tournament. Uh, they get a lot of momentum going and uh, the chairs move a lot more than in uh, category B. But uh, B, poorer balance and poor uh, recovery. But um, it makes a difference and it does make a difference in the range of movement for sure. Well, who... Losing the first point to Pender. So now his lead down to three points. Well, this match will be the first to ten. And Pender already making a quick inroads into that lead that he started with. Very quickly indeed. Over the top onto the arm of Hoop. And now Poland. Just one point behind. Who, celebrating his first point, might be a double, but he still leads by one. Yes, interesting how they can bring it back against the B classifi uh, classified fencer, and that's what's happening here. Poland coming back into it. Well, they bring the score to six all, and Pender has five victories over. Who's won? Now the Polish fencer really trying to now put Poland in a significant lead before he hands over to his teammates. What can Pender do? Can he make it 10-6? Because that would be a great advantage to Poland if he could. Two more hits needed for Poland. Four more needed for China to end this bout. Well, who's celebrating the double? But that means still a point to his opponent as well. Well, every point counts, of course. Another double. Well, I think Hu's probably fairly content with that scoreline. He knows that he was up against a Category A fencer. And now China trail by two. So it'll be up to Sun Gang and Camille Raja to see... Yes, it can be equalised. I was going to say, so people looking at that scoreline now would uh, look at Poland ahead in this match, but actually China, their best fence is still to come. Yeah, well, that bout there, Poland winning 9-3, to three, looks very dominant. But Pender will have two more bouts, and they will both be against classification A fences from China. So that will have been... Most probably the easiest of the bouts for Darius Pender. And one of the more difficult ones for Hugh Daoliang. That's what makes the relay so exciting. Especially in wheelchair fencing because we do have two category A and one category B fencer in every team. Sun Gang, People's Republic of China, up next against Karol Pianza of Poland. Well, this we expect to be the other way around because Raja... The Polish athlete is a Category B, and he now faces not only a Category A fencer, but the current Paralympic champion Category A FA fencer. No pressure at all. Absolutely none whatsoever. Well, I expect with this to be a little bit of a mismatch. China currently trailing eight points to ten well, the most significant lead they could get at this stage would be 15 to eight but that's only if Ranja doesn't manage to get a hit on his opponent's son so every hit here um, absolutely essential for Poland and double hits as well double hits do count so if we now have five double hits Poland, in theory, would still lead. That's unlikely in this situation. With the Paralympic champion from Category A up against a Category B fencer. 
But anything can happen in sport. And here we go. Ranja for Poland, getting the first hit over the Paralympic champion son. Yep, every, every point counts, and that was a really crucial one. And just to set his confidence and put Sun on the back foot, and Ranja with a double should be pretty happy with that because he's now only three hits away from maintaining the lead. If he can get three more doubles, Poland would maintain their advantage. Yeah, you'd think, wouldn't you, a Paralympic champion? Let's bring him in and pick up some points. And but it's not ah. just the Paralympic champion. It's Paralympic champion from the the less impaired category. So this, a great start for Ranja, the Polish athlete. I think it's important to point out as well is that uh, some athletes as well perform better in team competition than individual. And uh, I think you find that in a lot of combat sports. Well now Sun just being a little bit more cautious. And look at that. This really is an upset. We just said anything can happen in sport and we would not expect the individual scoreline to be 3-1. No, I, I think it happens in team. Well, it happens in teams as well. It's always the surprises seem to happen in teams. And like I say, certain people really rise to the occasion uh, when it comes to team competition. Zaza doing just that. And now Sun trying to get back in the game. He looked very calm and collected in all of his three bouts against Italy in the first match. Yeah, looked a bit rattled here though, didn't he? And uh, so now it uh, looks a little bit more as if he's on the game now. Well, I'm sure China will be confident of going through to the semi-finals, but they'll want to win over Poland to give them the best hope of making their journey to the gold medal match as easy as possible. And Sun working his way back towards Jaza. Yeah, woken up, hasn't he, Sun? And definitely different uh, than when he just came into this bout. Totally different attitude. 11.13, uh, can he pull it back? The clock counting down and another double touch. That puts Jaza just one hit away from maintaining the lead and really quite a significant phase of the match for Poland. Jaza four victories, Sun with four, but the overall scoreline. 14-12 to Poland. Well, look at that. Poland lead after the first three bouts. Yeah, I think Jose will be very, very happy with that. And I think Poland will be as well. Well, five all for Category B fencer, Camille Jaza, up against the Category A Paralympic champion, Sun Gang. Did not expect that, and I don't think either athlete would have expected that either. So the points difference, still Poland leading by two. And we expected that to really turn around on that bout, as I'm sure China did as well, because now... China have their category B fencer who Dao Liang up next up against category A Michal Nalavajek of Poland. So Poland could really see this as an opportunity to extend their lead. Yeah, that's incredible. And but like I said before, anything can happen in team competition and more often than not it actually does. Massive surprises, it's not always what's on paper. 
that comes through team competition, especially if they've performed so well in individual. Mihana Lavajek back on the piste. Only scored one point in his opening match against Yan Jiankuan. This is his chance to rectify that as he's up against Hu Daoliang. Now, Hu Daoliang, in his own classification, classification B, does have five Paralympic gold medals, various weapons, both team and individual for Lanepe. But less mobility for the athlete from the People's Republic of China. Nala Vajek, less experience in his first Paralympic Games. But he'll be using his increased mobility to his advantage. And double touches for Poland in this situation are good because they will just maintain their lead and creep ever closer to the 20 points that will see this back finish. And Nala Vajek extending that lead to 17 14 over China. Yeah, that was an important one there. Nalabajak gets another point. 18-14 and another double hit. So this is good for Poland. One point away. Well, another double. And Nalabajak will take that very quickly to 20 points. And the athletes, I think, didn't even realize they'd reached the end of that bout in what looks like record time. A discussion possibly over one of the points. No, hands are shaken and that bout is over. Well, it was five victories for Nalavajek to who's three and that extends Poland's lead now. Just over the shoulder of who on that occasion. That's double touch there. And that's pretty much the way Poland went to get there so quickly. Two individual hits for Nala Vajek. And the rest doubles. So, Poland now lead 20 points to 16. You can see on the scoreboard. And we move to bout number five. Tian Jianquan up against Camille Janza. Well, earlier, just a moment ago, we saw Jaza come onto the piece and we expected him to really lose some significant points up against Sun Gang. And he managed to hold his own. It was five all in that last fight. Tian Zhang Quan, the bronze medalist from these Paralympic Games in Epe. He's gonna see if he can do any better than the gold medalist managed against this Polish category B fencer. I remember this is up to forty five as a total and nine bouts in each team competition. So each of the fences has to compete against each other. But uh, this is a little bit of a surprise. But I have to say that the Polish team are fencing extremely well, picking up valuable points. Well, this will be putting Poland in strong contention for making it through to the semi-finals as well. Italy managed a maximum of 28 points out of the 45 against China. Poland already on 20 and leading the team that on paper will be favourite to win this overall title. A little bit of tactics here from Tian. Just asking to halt to readjust the fall apron, making sure the whole of the wheelchair covered from any possible attack. I'm going to say that's very much up to the fencer, isn't it, as well, to make sure that it's covered. Yeah, the referee keeping an eye, but here we go. Tian on the comeback. Can China overtake the lead that Poland have managed to open up?
Chiazza just trying to stay at a distance, keeping his point as close to Tian's wrist so that when Tian does come forward on that attack, he's hoping to pick him off on the way through. But Tian just lifting the arm and they're going underneath the arm extension of Raja. Again, Tian making it three points to nil and just one point away from equalizing the overall team score to 20 points apiece. 19 20 to China. Sorry, to Poland. China just trying to catch up, but that's the first point there to Jaza in the form of a double touch. Can Poland get to 25 before China? That's when the changeover will happen. The next two fences will come onto the piece for the next bout. Yeah, I think China will, relying on Tian to pull them back into this. They will be. This, in theory, should be a really good opportunity for China to do so. And now they level 21 apiece. But the actual score of this bout between the two individual fences is five to one. Tian Jiankuan with the five. Camille Jaza with one, and that's just from the double touch. So no individual hits actually scored by Jaza against the bronze medalist Tian. Yeah, that range of movement in the chair just making that difference. So Tian just waiting for the moment. Well, the clock's starting to tick down and Tian will have wanted to really try to increase the lead, but only just managed to equalize at the moment. And Jaza is probably aware of the clock and not wanting to give away any points to China. So not letting Tian get in close, but Tian, they're just flicking over the top and so quick, even though Jaza doing a great job to defend any action coming from his opponent. So the actual tactics here is uh, Jaza just trying to defend now and not give away points. Well, it could well be damage limitation, I think, for the Category B fencer up against Category A's bronze medalist. 30 seconds left on the clock. And now China with... A one point to lead and the overall team score. Oh, Tian getting ever closer to 25, now leading by two. But the overall score between these two athletes, seven to one. As we'd expect. But look, the clock, very little left, a double touch, and that will help Jaza there maintain without losing too many more points two points down but into the final 10 seconds five to go and i think the fence is just going to let the clock run out now and yep there's the time interesting tactics from tian he didn't want to give another double touch away or a potential actual point to jaza on the individual bout eight points Tian to Shaza's two, which puts China back in front. So you can see now team tactics and and the different tactics from both teams at different stages throughout the contest, and absolutely intriguing. Well, we move. On through to bout number six, nine bouts in total. So we are past the halfway mark. Sun Gang of the People's Republic of China up against Darius Penda from Poland. Both category A fences. Sun Gang, the new Paralympic champion in individual epee. Darius Penda competed in the foil and the epee 
we're only getting as far as eighth in the individual FA competition. Made it through to the semi-finals, finished fourth in the foil. So well warmed up in the wheelchair fencing here at these Paralympic Games, both of these fencers. Sung Gang, two medals already. Dariush Penda, a quarter-final and a semi-final finish for the Polish athlete. Yeah, surprisingly, Sungang first Paralympic Games, but competed obviously World Championships and Asian Para Games. Well, this could quite well be a close match. Darius Pender, much older and more experienced. Seven Paralympic medals to his name. But he's up against the very much in form Sungang. A Sungang first with that coupe touch inside the wrist of Penda. A lovely point, like just extending the lead. And overall to three for China over Poland. Now look at the amount of pressure on the on the chairs themselves as well because they, they need to be stable, those chairs. Uh, they're gripping on with the other hand and the amount of force on those chairs, tremendous, and sometimes we see a lot of movement along the piste. Double hit, point to piece. 27-23, China lead. Oh, this bout, very active and looking like it's not going to use the full three minutes. Penda getting another point on, 3-2 for the individual scores between these well-matched fences. Both being on top of the podium for the individual FA at Paralympic Games. Sun just two days ago. Pender back in 2012. Well, that's again, Sun went forward. Just explain what happens there when Sun comes forward there and then Penda counters. Well, Sun waiting for the attack from Penda on that occasion and coming with the counter attack. Just one point away. China from finishing this bout. And there it is. The hit for Sun Gang. Well, before the score is concluded, the referee just asked to check that the FA is working. It is the athletes will shake hands. Sungang with the six to Dariush Penders, three points, but that puts, more importantly, the overall score to 30 points to China, 20 to Poland. Well, certainly China having to fight a lot harder in this match than in their first one against Italy. And this puts Poland, doesn't it, in a good situation, uh, certainly with the points that they've gained here. Um. Well, so far, it is looking good for the Polish team compared to the Italians. So we saw the Republic of China up against Italy first. Well, next fight, Hu Daoliang will be up against Kamil Jaza. Now, these two are both in the same category. The only time category B will fence category B in this match. So we are showing you here pool B of the two pools in the men's FA team preliminaries. Three teams. Right now we are watching Poland against China. The third team in this pool B for the team of Italy. Only two out of the three will make it through to the semi-finals. And if you are just joining us, China currently leading over Poland, 30 points to 25, as you can see on the scoreboard. But China managed to beat Italy, 45 to 28. So if Poland can get four more victories in total over the next three bouts, it would put them ahead of the Italians at this stage. But then the fight will be crucial between the Polish and the Italian teams when they meet in the next match. Well, absolutely, but there's no uh, no doubting how important every point is 
but uh, certainly a lot more competitive this match. One butter has to stay in contact with the chair. They're not allowed to lift out of the chair and uh, they can get a yellow card if they do so. They come completely out of the chair. Two yellow cards and it's uh, a point to the opposition. I've got to say that uh, we haven't seen any infringements against the rules so far. So this I'd expect to be a closer match with the two Category B fencers who Dao Liang up against Camille Jaza. Two does have that five point lead, although Jaza the first to get a point on target. But the referee just checking something before he awards that. Yeah, I think it's Hugh that's not quite happy about it. Just explain about how many times they can look at the video playback. Well, the athletes can actually only request one in the team match, and that has now lost that opportunity as who didn't, didn't win his appeal. But the referee is allowed to have a watch of the replay. A total of four times over on each request. Not needed on that occasion. A quick decision. And now at every point here for Jaza, absolutely crucial. Already one ahead. Double hit. So now 31 to 27. 2 1 to Jaza. Another one to Jaza. Well, Jaza here making a great comeback. He really is doing a good job for Poland. He managed to maintain the lead early on when up against the reigning Paralympic champion. And now he's just one point away from putting Poland back in line with China. Yes, Poland fighting very, very hard for every point. That was a very important one there for Hugh. Well, if you look at the score, 32 to 30, Poland have already scored more than Italy did at the end of the match. So that will put Poland, the, make them the higher ranked team Who celebrating that point on target? Shaza doing a great job though against the higher ranked fencer who Yeah now starting to get into his stride, isn't he? Five four. Jaza still ahead against Hugh. But China now four points ahead of Poland. Just one more point needed for who to end this bout and maintain the lead for China. But Shaza is not willing to let it go. He's on the fight back. Already got two more points and crept that deficit back to just three points between the two teams. So just to explain, uh, this will carry on now until one of them gets to 35. The first to 35, points. so each bout 
is up to multiple of the next five. So the scores can obviously turn around, but it's always we finish on the number of five, ten, fifteen, etc. Jaza getting ever closer to who? Yeah, great performance from Jaza against you. Seven victories over Hughes seven, over Hughes four. And now trying to only with a two point lead. A lot of blade work from both these fencers who are stretching forwards to try and catch Jaza on the arm, but Jaza being so tidy with his points. Yeah, another great performance this, and Jaza now, they are really doing so, so well. Well, that point didn't go up, did it, for some reason? The referee obviously said no point. And the clock ticking down there. But I would think that at this stage, Jaza would like to get another couple of points on the board. Well, he's already done a magnificent job of crawling back that disadvantage, that deficit that Poland had ahead of this. But time running out and who maybe now just trying to limit losing any more points, losing any more of that lead that he started with. Five seconds remain. And you can see who just defending, not letting Jaza anywhere close and waiting for the time to run down. Well, who seemingly happy with that. Jaza a little frustrated with the tactics that imposed on him towards the end of that. But this is what the team event's all about. It's looking at the overall score and the experienced who might have only won four points to Jaza's seven, but he limited the damage at the end. Yeah, it does. It makes it completely different, doesn't it? Than if, if you're going for individual wins. And like you said, you've got to look at the overall points and the ones that you can save. And there we go. People's Republic of China, 34 points. Poland, 32 after seven bouts. Just two bouts remain. Sun Gang. Next on to the piece for the People's Republic of China, Michal Nalavajek, representing Poland. Well, Sun Gang didn't have a wonderful start. And he only managed to draw five all against Kamil Jaza. And then 6-3 over Darius Pender. You'd expect a little bit more form from the newly crowned Paralympic champion in the individual FA. Let's see if he's back into form against Mihal Alavajek. Well, for the ones that have just joined us there, the wheelchairs are just set uh, at a distance. And it's the fencer with the shortest reach and from the elbow and then the wheelchairs are set in place. Two bouts remain between the teams of the Republic of China and Poland. China lead by two points. The score 34-32 as you can see on the scoreboard. So now, it'll be the first team to reach 40 points that will end this bout. So the unusual situation when we're not starting on a multiple of five, and Nala Vajek too quick off the mark with that direct attack to the wrist and the referee bringing out a yellow card and not allowing the hit. Not so often we see that in FA. Sung just asking for a pause until the crowd calm down because they are struggling to hear the signals from the referee. It's great that the crowd are getting really involved and enthusiastic, but the athletes do need to be able to hear the instructions 
and Sun straight off the mark there to move that point. Yeah, not quite sure what uh, what's going on there. One apiece here. And uh, Sun straight in there again. Very aggressive. 36-33 now, China. And I think it's still going on there. The Mexican wave in the background and it's disturbing. And, well, such is the celebration from the Brazilian crowd. But uh, a little bit upsetting when you're out there trying to concentrate. Double hit this time, point each. Well, the request for the video review from Sung Gang. Yeah, just explain why ball. there. It, uh, it's because, of course, he thinks it's his point. I would have said that uh, it was a double hit, and I think he thought that he got it. But, I mean, that's just the way I saw it. Some discussion from Nala Vajek with the referee. Oh. Oh, he's asking what the what the question could have been for, what the request could be for, and referee pointing to the floor. And I think Nala Vajek rather surprised at that because it's unusual in wheelchair epe that the points would be so far off target that they would come in contact with the floor. Let's watch closely. Nowhere near the floor, uh, any of that. We'll have to wait and see what the referee concludes from his opportunity, his angle on the replay. And it was awarded as a double touch as both athletes hit simultaneously. Yeah, like okay. I say, I think that Sun was saying that it was his, and we saw him appeal a couple of times before, and doesn't very often appeal unless he's absolutely sure. Well, very enthusiastic crowd in the background. Fences trying to maintain their concentration. Still further discussions going on over this point. Yeah, well, every point now, so, so important. Coach is also getting involved. I think it looks as though the explanation now clear to the coach and the rest of the teammates of Sun. happy to come back on guard and the point was deducted from Nala Vajek. so no wonder the Chinese team happy with that and the referee just saying go on here it's certainly quite a deafening noise coming from the enthusiastic crowd yeah it's a definite appeal wasn't it from Sun and look at that another point up So 38 to 32, and China now, that's 39, one away. Well, the individual score of this match, five to zero. Forson over Nala Vajek, and Nala Vajek getting a point on at last. Can he reduce the deficit that Poland find themselves in? Not any further. This bout finishes. A score of 40 to 33 at the individual bout. Sungang beating Michal Nalavajek six points to one. The first time we saw a score start below a multiple of five. But Sungang really making the most of those six hits on offer, getting there as quickly as possible, just losing the one to Poland. So extended the lead it was a lead of two it's now a lead of seven 
And there it is, Republic of China, 40 points, 33 to Poland. Well, you could say there, couldn't you, that, well, he, why appeal? They were way, way ahead, but he, he knew, you know, and he had the feeling that it was his point, every point they're fighting for. Darius Pender, the final athlete to come on in this match for Poland. He's up against Tian Jianghua. So it's the first athlete to 45. And that will then conclude this match. And it will conclude Pool B for the People's Republic of China. Poland will be back on to fence Italy after this. Just explain what uh, exactly what Pender's got to do here. Well, he needs to get from the score of 33 to a score of 45 before Tian, if Poland are going to win this match. But it's a strong start for Tian, increasing that lead for China. Pender, one point back. Tian wants to have his equipment checked. The point will be confirmed. All working, the point will stand. One apiece. Tian against Pender. Pender had a strong opener. Only nine points over who which put Poland in the lead early on. And he's got his challenge ahead of him. Two points to one over Tian. But he hasn't got much of a comfort zone in which to make this deficit up. Because Tian is only four points away. Now only three points away from sealing the match for China. Yeah, Tian just, he knows that Pender's got to come forwards. Just explain why they are tucking it in there. It's very important from a safety point of view. That's more as well for the actual scoring area. Making sure the off target isn't too high or too low. Double touch are expensive for Poland because even though it gives them a point, it does but China, another point closer to winning this match. Pender, four individual hits over Tian's three, but still the team score 43 to 37. First to 45. Pender. Trying to come in on the attack, but Tian Kart Parry just defending, taking his time, not reposting straight away. Another double. Tian won't be complaining about doubles in this situation. Well, certainly a, a good score line there for Poland. Really pushing China till the end. Tian now just one point away from the overall victory in Pool B. They've already won their opening match. Tian just apologising but wanted to be really check and ensure that his FA was working properly. One more point for China will finish this match and there it is Tian Jianquan seals it with the final touch five apiece for these two well matched Tian Jianquan and Dali Ashpender both Paralympic medalists Tian the younger one the most recent medalist from these games